want to tell you why evolution is a lie that you've been told all your life. Well, I didn't find out about evolution until high school, but if we're talking about lies, I was told a lot of heinous lies as a child, like the one about an old fat guy who watches me while I'm sleeping and judges me to see if I've been naughty or nice. It's messed up. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm R. In this video, we're going to do a response to Robert Light's video as he explains why evolution is a lie and we shouldn't believe it. Let's get started. For starters, it's only a theory, an idea of man that has no basis, has no evidence. Well, we're going to disagree on that. Firstly, we have to clarify the difference between what you mean by the word theory and what scientists mean by the word theory. This is a common misconception perpetrated by many creationists. In general terminology, a theory refers to an idea which is suggested to be possibly true, but has not been proven to be true. When scientists use the word theory, however, it's a little bit different. In science, a theory is a coherent group of tested general propositions commonly regarded as correct, that can be used as principles of explanation and prediction for a class of phenomena. The main differences in these definitions come from the words tested and prediction. For a scientific theory to be considered a scientific theory, it must have testable and repeatable evidence to support it and be able to make accurate predictions. In regards to you saying there is no evidence for evolution, that simply is incorrect. There is a large list of evidences which are put together to give us the theory of evolution that include biochemistry, comparative anatomy, biogeography, comparative embryology, molecular biology, paleontology, modern examples of biological evolution, and radioisotope dating. Rather than explaining each of these in detail, I'll leave some links in the description. Please check them out. The point being, whether you like it or not, there is evidence. You can't simply state there is no evidence. It's just misinformed at best and dishonest at worst. You see... Every species on this earth never went through any evolution. They all began as that species, and they all ended as that species. So I'm surprised you use the word species as it puts you in a really difficult position. We have plenty of examples of one species splitting into two different species that can't interbreed, or speciation as it's known. A great example of this is anole lizards. Once again, we'll place some links in the description so you guys can read up on speciation. There were only some adaptations, but there was never any evolution. Evolution's false, it's a lie. Nothing evolves from one thing to another. Admitting that adaptation happens essentially defeats your argument. You accept that the gene pool is plastic to the environment. For larger examples of evolution, you just have to add time. I have an analogy that explains it relatively well. You have accepted a car can drive 20 km per hour, you accept it could go 40 km in 2 hours, but then deny it could travel 400 km in 20 hours. If you accept that a rate of change happens, you just multiply it by time, and that's essentially how macroevolution occurs. You see, God created every species on this earth, and that species he created remains that way until it's extinct. Do you have any evidence for that claim? Seriously, you require an unrealistic level of evidence to accept evolution, yet accept the God claim on a much lower level of evidence. Special pleading much? There's never any crossing over of species. Each remains the same as God made it. God's a God of order. If you have a look at the way, for instance, the plants are made, everything's in order. What do you mean by order? You probably should specify what you mean. From what I can tell, you are looking at things after the fact and claiming because they work, it must be God. The so-called order in life forms is advantageous to them. Hence, it is favoured by evolution. The circulatory system, for example, wouldn't be very efficient if it was disordered. Hence, evolution wouldn't favour it. Cells are grouped in orders. Leaves are according to a pattern. Groups of threes and sixes according to the pattern that God has made them. Groups of threes and sixes? I'm, I'm not sure what you meant by that. I'm fairly certain cells aren't always grouped in threes and sixes, and the tree leaves behind you don't seem to be either. Your body's in order, it follows certain uh, strict patterns, the planetary um, orbits in the stars are all in order, and they follow strict patterns. Everything moves according to patterns and orders. 
You know why that is? The laws of physics. It appears to be ordered because everything is following very specific laws. And if they weren't, you wouldn't be able to stand there and claim it was done intelligently because you wouldn't exist to do it. These laws of physics are a natural part of our universe. I am fairly certain your response to this would be to say they exist because of God. But bear in mind, you would have to prove that. Because God put it there. He made it that way. He also made you that way. Oh, there you go. I called it. Okay, so God made it that way. Okay, cool. First, you need to prove the existence of this God, and then you need to demonstrate how it does these things. You have done neither and expect people to just accept it. The evidence we have right now only shows this to be as a result of natural laws. Why should we disregard this model for a model with no evidence? You see, evolution's a lie. It's a lie to make you believe false things so that you won't see the truth that is plainly before your eyes every time you step out your back door. That uh, seems like a tautology to me, but ignoring that, you claim it's a lie, and that just shows how little you've looked into this. The thousands of scientists that have worked on this over centuries are not all lying. Even if they are wrong about evolution, they still genuinely believe it and are following the evidence they have. They aren't lying. I am not sure why you are so intent on ascribing bad intentions to people you don't know just because they have reached a different conclusion than you. Also, as a side note, if it was as obvious as you say that God created everything, then more people would accept it than do now, and there wouldn't be as much disbelief to your claim. You see, once you start to believe that God created all things including you, then you can start to fear him. That really doesn't sound like something I would want to do. Living in constant fear sounds pretty crappy. And realize that he did come to earth as Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and to save you. I would happily believe that if you can give me some independently verifiable evidence to demonstrate it. But since you haven't, I won't believe it. So that you can then have eternal life through him. You see, if you keep on believing evolution, you'll just keep believing lies. And you then just fall, if, fall into hell when you die. Okay, I have a couple of issues with this. Primarily that you haven't demonstrated it's a lie, you haven't addressed any of the evidence the theory of evolution is based off, and you have just committed a fallacy of assertion by repeating it's a lie over and over again, and expecting people to believe it. And secondly, you haven't provided any evidence that your religious claims are true, thus giving me no reason to believe them. You know, dear friends, evolution offers no hope, no, no uh, future for you, uh, no love. But God offers these things. Evolution's a lie and can give you nothing, but God will give you hope. Turn to Jesus. The truth doesn't have to offer me hope. That's an appeal to consequences fallacy. The truth of something is not based on how it makes you feel or even what positives it offers you. It is based off the evidence supporting it that you can demonstrate consistently. No more, no less. Don't believe the lie any longer. People who teach it, they themselves they don't have anything. Really? You know all the details of their lives? Look, my life's pretty good. I have a lot of good things in my life, and my understanding of that evolution is most likely true has no effect on that. Your claim that they have nothing in their lives just seems like a desperate attempt to devalue people who disagree with you. They've got empty philosophies. You know what seems like an empty philosophy to me? One that has you living in constant fear of something you have no good reason to believe exists. I don't give them anything. But God gives you many things, including an eternal salvation through the name of Jesus Christ. So turn to him. Don't believe empty philosophies anymore that don't give you any hope. Jesus bless you. Right now, that is a promise of eternal salvation by someone that isn't God or Jesus and who also has no evidence for me to believe this promise. There is a difference between the promise and the delivery of a promise. Look, if Jesus himself descends from the clouds and pinky swears that I'll get eternal salvation, I may start believing in and worshipping him. Though honestly, I have a pretty sweet deal with his holiness bloop right now and I wouldn't want to give that up. He's promised me cookies. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for weekly videos, hit the like button, and share this video around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.